Is this the <laughs> most real hunting you've ever done? You ready? Yeah. Let's get it. Good luck, man. The elk were on the side hill here and we were trying to move in like this. I crawled that whole bottom from the edge of this field. Mm -hmm. All the way to yeah. See if we'd have the rifle. <laughs> Look at him. Okay, I see him. Yeah, don't, don't you move. The first time we found him, they were basically out in this field somewhere right in here. We come together with a game plan, Brayden, myself, Peter, of how we're gonna move around these elk, but we didn't really wanna push them. We, we wanted them to walk to us because they were going down in here and then kind of moving around like this. And we felt like they might, you know, filter something like this. Basically, we're gonna walk in this road right here. Are you ready? Is this the <laughs> most real hunting you've ever done? This is the closest I've ever been to legit hunting. I'm telling you. It'll get serious. We split, one guy goes down here, one guy goes this direction, and then another is going to walk this direction because basically at this point, when we go to make a move on them, they, they were staged right in this area. You ready? Yeah, let's get it. Good luck, man. Brayden goes down around here. Peter sets up right here. Me and Kevin walk around this way. We get down in here and about right here, I told Kevin, I don't like this. There's a ravine, it drops down. And I think if we just go right up that fence line and we peek over the top, they're gonna be down there, I don't know, maybe 100 yards. There's a draw that goes down in here that the elk were on the side hill here and we were trying to move in like this while the wind was blowing across coming this direction. This is the wind. But when it hit the other side of that hill, it swirled. I believe that the wind swirled. I bet that hit that bottom and it kind of curled and our scent blew right over into there. I mean, we were a long way from them yet. They smell that. <laughs> because we were 150 yards. Brayden ended up being about right there. Like I, I crawled to him, got 110 yards wrong. And he was about 120 yards. Never even seen the elk and busted us. Oh, you seen him? I didn't see him. Are they starting to see him? I mean, are they seeing them or are they the elk seeing them? No, they haven't even seen him yet. But I was right there at the drone and he radioed to me where they were at. Uh, the first time that we wanted to make a move on him. Basically, Jay was giving us updates. He was flying the drone that, you know, what they were doing, how they were reacting. Braden, if you look down that uh, field edge, they're basically directly straight into the woods from that, from the end of that field. All right, I'm gonna set up on the head of this head drone and let them work around. I crawled that whole bottom from the edge of this field. Mm -hmm. All the way to yeah, so there's a big dip in there. Yeah. And they were just across the dip for us. Really? I think they were 120 yards. But we never even got close. He's like, oh, they're running. And they basically ran all the way back through here, just going for it without ever seeing us. They smelt us, they were over it. It was get out of there uh, in the elk's mind is what they were thinking. But we had them surrounded. Yeah, but the wind this it swirl? Hit, I think it'll hit that bank, right? Yeah. It comes over and yeah. hits that other side yeah. and then it might roll. I got down there, there's just no wind. Oh, dude. It it's... was miserable. Yeah. I was sitting there crawling, how did it take all this off? I'm like, holy crap. Yeah, it's miserable. <laughs> so the next uh, four or five setups, we started moving in on them a lot quicker. Uh, you know, if, if we would have had a rifle, they would have been done probably the first or second setup. See if we'd have the rifle. <laughs> All of them, all of them. Because we would have set up on them differently. But trying to get that, you know, 50 yard range with these tranquilizer guns, super difficult. So as we were going through these setups, we realized that trying to make a move on three elk at once is very difficult. So our goal was to try to split them up. Dude, it's gonna work better if we can split them like this. That way we can just go after one rather than three. And we seen them come across this field and it was a perfect time to split them up. At that time, we were able to get in there with the drone and look at 
the two that were still in the woods and it kind of caught them off guard and we got them split up. There's two and then one. So we started making a move on him. Peter goes after the one. Right to my left, sir. I'm about to walk into the field. No, don't walk to the field. Look where my drone is. She's looking at you. We're trying to navigate him to try to get in there. At this point, we didn't send a camera guy with him and we're watching it from the top. And we realized right away that with one elk, we're able to get a lot closer to him. Dude, he got close. So is it elk running now? No, it's just close. Okay, there, there she goes. He was able to get eyes on, on the elk. He was 100 yards, but to close that distance again to 50 was very difficult. So we knew that that's how we had to do this. We had to split the elk up. Oh yeah, let's split her up. And get in there on them as singles and not as threes or twos. So now that the elk are split up, it's actually a good thing. He's gonna go split them up further so that we can uh, then isolate the one elk and have a better chance at uh, making a move on the one elk. So now he's going up, straight line, separate them further and uh, do it that way. All right, so it was almost noon and we had a single that we were wanting to make a move on. The elk was basically in this location. We had the wind blowing like this. So we put a guy, I think it was Brayden, went in this direction and Peter came in from this direction. Then me and Kevin were going to walk in here and come around. We wanted the elk, which is right here, we wanted her to pick up our wind blowing this way and maybe chase her this way or this way. And we got so close, it almost worked. Brayden and Peter were within 70 yards of this elk. Me and Kevin ran all through the woods. We ended up running all the way around here, dip down, come around, and all the way out to the road. That was the run. Huh? Yeah, that was good. That was a good run. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, the elk had spooked out, went, was staged up in this area for a little bit, came down, around and was out here they're pretty close to directly below it they are moving a little south now when me and uh, kevin get to the road the elk was getting ready to cross the road here oh okay go go yes go back that way we get to the truck i jump on the back of the truck i'm like hey quickly take me down the road and around and he's like my truck's stuck it don't go in drive this truck is jacked up, or we would get it. We would have got it. I'm gonna say we would have got it. We were that close. Oh, yeah, and we were coming up on the backside. I had her in the scope. So I was just going to do it. She's moving. Could have missed. Bad. Crowd on the side of the road, out the truck. Don't know what was up. Pretty crazy. That joker's ginormous. Yeah, he's he's a large one. 800 pounds all day. Crazy. We basically started rocking the truck back and forth to try to see if the thing goes into park. We mess with it for a while. Look at him. Look at him just sitting in there. Right now. There it is. Work. The elk, you know, is long gone by this time. We get it back into park and then uh, we had to regroup. All right, so it was midday, uh, the guys we're taking a nap. We had found the elk down in a bottom, laying in a creek, and I wanted to try to make a move on him by myself, but then the elk owner also wanted to help us with this um, this setup. Yeah. Today's Friday, yeah. right? I didn't sleep Thursday. The last time I slept was uh, Wednesday. That's all right. Basically, the elk were set up down in this bottom in a creek, and the original plan was me and Kevin get dropped off and we move in like this. That's what the plan was going to be. But then the elk owners wanted to help. Me and Kevin were going to be dropped off on this side and we would walk down like this. They would drop a second guy off over here and then a third guy would come in and set up here. The wind was like this. What we were hoping is maybe when they, you know, these guys walk down into here, that drift would go up there. But that's not how the plan went. 
we get dropped off here, and they go to drop off another guy I thought coming around, but they ended up dropping another guy off right here. That already messed up the plan because this you know, creek goes right down to where the elk are. I don't understand why he dropped him off there. Over there where the other guy went, you dropped off here. They got alert and they started going that way. We were gonna come down in there, creep down in there, and then if we bump them, then they go over to those other guys. Me and Kevin start moving in this direction. Basically, one guy came here. Me and Kevin ended up getting to about right here. Elk busts out. Oh yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. go back that way. So after busting out the elk again for who knows how many times at this point, but it was a lot, we get our final attempt. I was like, we have to get this done. There's a big storm moving in at this point. We got a storm coming. We want it rain, but just not a storm. Let's look at the rain that's coming. Let's see how much is coming. Come back. Oh my gosh, see it hanging down? Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be good if it rains. We were gonna have to get this done at this point. We move in on the elk, they're close. Me and Kevin are probably at that 80 yard mark. Yeah. Okay, I see him. Yeah, don't, don't you move. Uh, we're playing the wind, it's working. I think Peter got a shot at one, but came up way short. Anyhow, the elk started moving around and I still was not giving up at this point. I was like, we have to get in front of them. Jason in an earpiece was like, they're moving this direction. It looks like she's down in a bottom a little bit, like in a creek bottom, like a little swale. Okay, now she's moving. Mike, close the distance. They're going to go right in between us. And I basically get on my horse and it's get out of there. I'm running, jumping over logs, trying to close that distance between Jason and I. At this point, I see him coming through the woods. I'm getting pumped. I'm leaving Kevin in the dirt. He's trying to run with this camera. Elk are coming through the woods, really trying to get him down to that point. Can I get him cut off by the time they cut the field? We were within yards of making this happen, of being at the right place. But I'm running, they shoot the gap, run over up across the field. I pull up once to try to get a shot at one, but I just didn't want to risk hurting the elk at all at that point. And uh, they went up over the hill, big old storm moves in, we get rained on, the elk win, and we're out because we've tried way too long and that's basically it. Who tries to run after elk? <laughs> I'm a human with two legs. Oh my gosh, what a joke. The elk win, we didn't, I'm not gonna say we lost because I feel like we still did something. We just didn't get the elk on the ground. So it was a wild time, but we're wrapping up with these elk. We're done, they win. We are just giving up at this point. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs> like, I'm trying to run after elk. <laughs> one field could feed the state of Ohio. <laughs> and I got sent to the back. Dude, dude, we were close. We got a, shot, got a shot off, yeah. Yeah. Hey, we got a boogie. It's gonna rain on us. Well, let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs>